Hey everyone, welcome back to an episode of Two Divine Women. I am your host, Nabella the Divine. And I am Shania, the goddess. Love it. <laughs> and we're here to talk about a really good topic, the B word. What do you think about that? All right, it's going to be a good topic. And happy Halloween, everybody. Hey. That's that we're dressed up like this. Uh, we like are empowered me. women who don't care about anybody because that's what bees do, right? We're not bees, but you know. Anyway, right. y'all just pay attention. Just stay tuned and see what we got for you. Go <laughs> skin but it also depending on the content the context of it I, I rock with it okay so expand on this how okay. is it when is the b word a bad way a bad a, a pejorative term well when somebody you don't like is saying it to you for one mm -hmm. so um you know you probably you're out and about and somebody spills a drink on you and you're like b you're like oh hold on what what we're not gonna do is go this way. So that would be the negative term about it. But if I'm like, Shh, not B, I don't know, B, you know what I mean? It's, like, it's different. Or I guess it just depends on the person as well because some people, they don't like it whether it's positive or negative. That's just them. Yeah. So it also depends on the person. Um, like I said, for me, it, it, there's just something about it when your homegirls say it. Mm -hmm is like a word as opposed to you know somebody on the street or whatever or you know or like or like if you're being stuck up or somebody don't like you they throw that word out there first as an insult right that word that word is so funny it, it's it's like one of those words like the n-word how people it was intended in a negative context but people flipped it on its head and made it something different um i've been called the b word um mm -hmm. I don't go out of my way to be a B word. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not a super dominant person. But I think for me, I was very reserved as a child. Um, kind of awkward and socially, uh, just kind of reserved. And people. To yourself. Yeah, people took that to mean that I thought I was better than other people. So people thought I was being stuck up, and they were like, "Oh, she looks like she's you know a bitch or whatever." And it's like, um, well, get to know me first, because all because you're intimidated by. A, a way that you can approach me or you're uncertain and I make you feel not insecure but I'm making you second guess yourself doesn't mean that I'm being a bitch to you it's just the fact that you're projecting your own insecurities on me because you feel inferior and now you want me to feel guilty and basically change my persona to meet you halfway so you can feel more superior and so I think sometimes when people use that word they use it to disempower someone in that context where they they see someone who's like, okay, the, the case of a woman who's very strong and confident and self-sufficient, I'm not saying like a woman who goes around saying, I'm a strong independent woman, I don't need a man. I'm not you talking about it. that. Right. But like women who are visibly comfortable with themselves, maybe they're single, maybe they're doing their own thing. A guy can go up to her and she is being honest with him. Like he's like, oh, can I take you out? Whatever. She's like, no, I'm good. All of a sudden she's a bitch because he didn't get her away with her. Instead of being like, okay, you know what, thank you for the opportunity, or, you know, okay, have a good day. He has to be childish because his ego is hurt and he's gotta make her feel less than. And I think that's a very disempowering way that the B word gets thrown around um, because it's meant to make that woman feel like taking, taking her off of her high horse mm -hmm. and bringing her down to size because his whack ass ego can't handle being rejected. Who's the real B in that situation, that him or her? Whack. He's the B, because he can't <laughs> handle rejection. Grow up. Who raised you? Who raised you? <laughs> uh, who raised you? <laughs> I definitely <laughs> agree. I mean, why, why would you do that? I mean, I know your ego is, is kind of bruised, but okay, dust yourself off, talk to somebody else. Because he has to make you feel bad so he, can, so he doesn't have to take the rejection. It's like sour grapes, you know, that story of, I think it was like, a, it was a weird story. It was like some wolf trying to get grapes. And... <laughs> <laughs> from this tree and then, I don't even know why there's a tree this makes no sense but it's it's basically the analogy of someone trying to get fruit at the top of the tree 
and they're climbing to the top of the tree and because the climb is so high and they're they're not able to get the fruit easily they have to insult the fruit instead of saying this is just not the tree or the fruit mm. that i should be at actually good analogy <laughs> i don't want to make it's don't a look climb he's it. trying to climb a tree with his grapes what I mean, I mean, <laughs> hey, if it looks too steep don't climb it I, I'm I'm just saying, stomp. go get some rotten right. fruit that, that's more in your league <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one it's actually a good one but I know like people people say, especially with black people, they're like, you know, people who are not black who listen to a lot of rappy stuff, like, dang, y'all wanna, you know, you have you know, part of black people who wanna say black women are queens, but then you have hip hop music or rap music that makes black women sound so disrespectful and they're calling them B's, B's and H's. So what about that context when it's being used in music but it's not supposed to be taken offensively? Oh, that is kinda it's weird. Again, I'm going to say it's a contradiction because, like I said, a lot of the rappers are men and they're making these um, these records or what have you. And the women, we're dancing to them. We're like, hey, you know, it's this not a third. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> depending on, I guess, the person's mood or what have you, it's like, okay, yeah, you are a queen, but I don't know if you, just my preference, I don't know if I want to hear queen uh, music at a lounge rather at a, at a club. I may want to Conscious hear that. Rap. Right, I want I to hear that stuff. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, uh, upbeat. <laughs> I would want to hear upbeat tempo, and you know, I'm not really thinking, you know, that I'm calling myself a B or a Ho or whatever. And for me, it's mostly the beat. I don't yeah. know if you know. I feel you. The beat, beat catches you, and then you, next thing you know, you you just you know the lyrics basically. So, so in that context, it's understood that it's not supposed to be. An insult because it goes with the context of the music and it's true you know it, you have to I guess I, I like all kinds of music but when I'm in the mood for like trap I don't want to hear no bull crap I want to hear some right. real you know that that particular style kick down the door and down yeah, the house. Right. I'm in the trap house <laughs> you know and I'm okay with hearing it in that context because I don't take it personally so right. it's just funny when people who don't listen to rap music they, they're like well how do you expect to be respected when your music is making you sound horrible by calling you B's and, B's and H, but it's, it's just understanding the context of that music because sometimes some of the, the music that incorporates the most profanity has a vibe of like aggression mm -hmm. and that might be from being on the streets or that might just be wanting to let all that anger out and it's understood that that goes with the theme. Right. That actually, that's actually a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Okay. So how about this? Okay. We talked about, um, Somebody calling you the B in, in that manner. What would you say if, let's say they didn't have a broad vocabulary, so every other word is a B, and they're not they're not calling your name. It's just like B this and B that, and girl this not the third. Like, could you see yourself like interacting with that person if that's the only uh, word that you knew? <laughs> I, when you before you even asked me that question, I was like, I would not be around someone like that. Like there's a time and place to, I guess you have different types of friends for different types of things. So you right. might have the friend who's like super lit, she's super turned, she's all, blah, blah, blah. and that's okay, but I can take that in small doses because I don't, I don't want to hear you curse every five minutes. Right. I, I'm not saying cursing is bad, but I would be like, read a book. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Like there, there's nothing wrong with cursing, but if that's a filler thing for you, and you expect me to listen to that and be like, yeah, girl, I understand. Wait, yeah, what did that, what did that be say? Wait. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not going there with you. That's annoying. She said, um, read a book. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that people who curse all the time are not intelligent, but but you need a bigger vocabulary. Like, if, if I'm going to be around you, you don't have to use big words, but that's just annoying. Like, I don't think the word, the B word should be used to, descri to describe. A person, place, or thing. Yeah, it's like, it's like <laughs> a direct object. It's, it's at the end of every sentence. It's just like, it's too much, but... I know for me, like, I would say an absolute way that I cannot stand being called a B-word is if it's coming from, like, a significant other. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I understand, that. like, people may use it, your friends may use it to be like, bitch, what? You know, and it's like, okay, that's fine. Or you might have women who are jealous and envious call you that. I've been called that by a few haters, and I've learned to not take it personally because they are just feeling inferior to me so they have to try to bring me down their sides by tearing me down right. and in that case I, I'm like well if you're gonna call me a bitch make sure you call me queen bitch you because you be yeah I, I can be a bitch or whatever else but I'm still gonna be above you so you can kiss my ass while you're underneath me Whoa. how's that for bitch um 
but that's my mentality because it's like you know if you if if you didn't think that I was worth the attention, you wouldn't be giving me the attention. So I take it. This is facts. But um, I definitely want to talk a little bit more about the significant other. To me, that's like the the absolute most offensive person or the the most offensive space that being called the B word can come from. Your significant other, you might curse, you might say other things, you might say that you know, might say, oh shit, whatever, whatever. So I'm gonna curse too much. But I think cursing at that person and calling them that is completely offensive. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I That's agree. bad. But we're definitely gonna talk about that when we come back. Stay tuned. But before we get into that, my eyes can went down here real quickly. What do we got here? So we've got some goodies from our sponsor, Seafoam Sea Gifts. And it looks like there's some really cool bookmarks here. And Ooh. look how cute these are. It's just a whole bunch of different designs. We've got an owl with feathers. Oh, I love this one. We've got a crown. Look at that. Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo, y'all. And then this one is Queen like home. Right. another owl, but it's a different design. So you guys make sure you hit up Seafoam Sea Gifts. You can check them out on Facebook by searching or you can go to www.etsy.com slash shops slash Seafoam Sea Gifts. Another way that sounds. Music to my ears. Nice. Oh, and actually you got on some stuff too. I do. I was wondering if I I was over here doing Yeah, I was watching you like, organize uh, that. But um, so it looks like, okay, so what this is, is this is a diffuser bracelet. And what's interesting about this is on the inside you get a little felt ball and you add essential oils to it. And it helps if you're having a stressful day and you wanna relax on the go. And you put in a few drops and you'll be able to smell it if you move your arm around. You don't have to have it right on your nose. This is me. <laughs> all day, just sniff it. And then you've got the necklace to match that as well. So again, you guys can is check there it out. Is there in here too? There is. I would be looking so weird if I wear this set, you guys. I'd be like this. <laughs> Hopefully you put What's enough that? essential oil so you can smell it. Don't be like, <laughs> so you be like, girl, what are you doing? Yeah, you get, you get in my business. You get in my business. So, like I said, we were talking about the B word and using it when it comes to having a fight or being mad with your significant other. Mm -hmm. And I would say, no, no, I do not like that because- It's not cute? And no, I don't like that. And I say that because I kind of equ equate that, the B word, to the N word. Mm. And I'm not going to call you that. In that context. And exactly. Got you. Exactly. So I would not want you to call me that in that context. Yeah. That's not, that's not, we're not happy right now. This is not a fun time. So I, the way I'm taking it is like, okay, you mean this crap. It's a very, it's a very, it's a very serious time and emotions are high. So anything that anybody's gonna say, people say stuff out of anger that can be offensive, but like in that context, when you're being vulnerable, you're being angry, you're absolutely right. It's easy to take that word seriously. And I think if a guy is like, oh, you being, a, you know, it, it, especially if a woman is being emotional and she's saying something to him that he doesn't wanna hear, that's a very, that's a very unnecessary way to approach him not liking what she's saying, you know? Right, because then my feelings don't matter. This is how you're equating my feelings. Right. Instead of, okay, this is how I feel, Instead of saying, okay, well, that's, that's a B move. Okay, let's talk about this. Let's right. unpack this. You yeah. know what I mean? So. I had a guy ask me, well, what if I say to a woman, you know, you're acting like a... And I'm like, why would you say that, though? If you're saying she's acting like a B word, you might as well Just say it. she's a B word. Like, why? And I said, there's other words that you can use to describe a woman who's upset. Like, cantankerous. Oh, example. I like that one. We Stop being like so the... cantankerous. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Look at that. And she gonna be like, what? And he gonna be like, exactly. But she's not gonna be mad because if she's being a little cranky, which is what cantankerous means, it, it draws it almost draws attention away from what's going on and it's like a little distraction. Like she's gonna be like, wait, I'm not even mad anymore. I wanna know what this word means. Then I go to the dictionary <laughs> and there you go. And then you can bond together over reading the dictionary and being smart. Hello, cantankerous one. <laughs> that was one it works. It works. Trust me, trust me, it works. So it's another one. Another one. It's another big word. Another big word? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm in this space right now. Oh, go for it. I can't think of a cantankerous. Indubitably. Indubitably. <laughs> Did I say it right? Instead of the right. Stop, Stop being indubitably. <laughs> so we're like, uh-uh, sit down. Okay, right. We're going to fight just for you saying that, basically. Um, but I would say, but yeah, so that for me, that is a no. That is a no for me, too. For real, I, re I really, I think that opens a door for physical violence. I don't condone physical violence, but you know, some people would say, well, I'm not the type to hit somebody, but they did this. And again, I'm not saying that I'm not condoning violence, but some certain pe people can be triggered. That's gonna make you want to steal off on them. 
It, right, and whatever is going to come from that is not going to be good. And I'm sure the person's going to counter with something that's going to be just as offensive. So and you got a whole domestic violence case. Exactly. I'm just saying. So you got to be careful. But um, okay, what about when you have female musicians who are trying to use that word as a word of empowerment? Like, I don't want to say feminists, for example. I know some of them will say, you know, I'm, I use that word in a positive way because it means a strong woman. Um, like from an artistic perspective, when women use that word to define not having to bow to gender stereotypes or be someone who's weak will to be validated. Mm. I have mixed, mixed feelings about that because the way I look at how they're doing it is that, remember, like we said earlier, it was caused, it was used to be derogatory. So I believe that they're taking it back mm -hmm. and owning it. Same thing as the N word. True. So that's how I look at that. Yeah, it is, it is, you know, negative, but I'm gonna flip it. And I'm if you're gonna if you're gonna call me that, put this in front of it. You know what I mean? That type of Yeah, thing, that's true. So. I think I think it's I think we on some level, because words have a lot of power. Right. And we know that. Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. I think we can't control how people use those words. We can only be aware of in my opinion, we can only be aware of what the words mean and use them in a way that's healthy. Obviously, when we get upset and we feel emotionally charged, we're gonna say things that we might regret if we're under the influence, the same thing may happen. But I think there comes a point where we have to be able to use these words and flip them around if they're meant to break us down. And <clears throat> there are other words that exist that are meant to talk, to, to kind of tear people down and make them feel less than, but in a sense where you know you're not doing anything wrong. Like if you have people who are hating on you and they're just trying to throw negative words at you to disempower you, I definitely think that's a great way to take something back and flip it on them. Yeah. Like, you know, because words have power, but we don't have to feed into what they mean in the context that they're meant to be used in. True. So I think that's where it comes into play with us, you know, understanding who we are as people and what people are doing. Using that third eye to discern, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on and see behind the scenes of people's, people's actions. Yeah. So you use it with your friends. I do. And like you said, I have, you have certain friends that you hang out with. Like you said, you can take some in small doses, some you can hang out 24 seven. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't use that word around a certain group of friends if I know that that's not their cup of tea. Cause I don't want to make them uncomfortable. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if I'm with, I don't want to stereotype the name though, but if I'm with this person and she was like, eh, then I know that's where the conversation is going. But if this one, and she's like, you know, she has a bigger vocabulary. I'm gonna go ahead and be on that level with that person. Yeah. So. I'm not gonna lie. I've used, I've used the, I've used the B word. I don't use it a lot, but I do use it. Like I'll say, oh, this person's being really bitchy. Like I'll say that. So it's a little more indirect. So okay. So is that the same as this person is acting like? Is that kind of? It's kind of. It sentence? could be a softer way of saying it. Um, if someone tells me you're acting kind of bitchy, versus calling me. Or acting like, remember you you're acting like. Right, you're acting, acting like a bitch. Or, or even, not just that though, but if someone's like, stop being a bitch versus you're being bitchy. For okay. me, I can tell, for some reason I can tolerate someone saying, you're being bitchy right now. It's not as offensive, because it just seems a lot more subtle, and I kind of take that to mean I'm being cantankerous. But if someone were to say, I guess it's just the word itself, because if someone's like, yeah, you're being a bitch right now, that just is more triggering to me. Question. Now, would it change on, will the feeling change on who's saying it? I guess. Um, it's not something that I hear a lot. I, I don't really have a lot of cantankerousness to my nature. I love it. Word of the <laughs> day. Word of the day, people, is cantankerous. We're going to put it down here somewhere. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you listen to like a lot of OG reggae songs they use that word a lot like when they say vex and they say cantankerous mm -hmm. that's a word that you hear in a lot of caribbean music and it's actually pretty respectful i mean like it's 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 nice like i feel like people should use that word more but um i don't really like i know there are a lot of women in music who have more alpha personalities and they like to use that word to dominate or to put themselves above other people and if you do that, that's on you, that's fine. But then I feel like they can't be mad when other people call it. that word. It's just like you're opening the door up for people to be like, well, you said it first, why can't I say it? That so, 
And here's the thing, and then that's gonna bring me back to the N word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can say it. <laughs> Certain people can say it. Well, really, don't can don't say you it. say it. Those are it, it's true, it's one of those words that has a double, a, not a double meaning, but it has certain privileges, and mm -hmm. certain people have access to that privilege. Because I, I know there's some people who feel like that about the N-word. Oh, well, it's cool, that word has been, you know, we've been making it better, or we've been reclaiming it as something different. But that doesn't mean that everybody has access to it. I know there's some people out there who are white, and they're like, well, black people said it first, why can I say it? Because you're not a black person, motherfucker, don't say that shit. <laughs> Yes, I said it. I said she that. She said what she said. I, I hate that. Like, <laughs> yo, season two is lit. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, don't don't say that for real. Like, I don't like that for real. It's not. It's not. You know. I know there's certain black people. Oh, but he's light skinned I don't care. Don't say that. That is not okay. Don't be cantankerous. <laughs> I just got cantankerous. Don't like for real. That shows you how much I don't like that. <laughs> I'm not gonna curse anymore because it's not gonna be nice. He cursed enough for the both of us, y'all. I don't. That's and that's. I don't curse a lot, but when I do, that's one of the words that I like to use. Okay. Samuel Jackson. Gotcha. That's my inspiration. <laughs> He's a great actor. Very eloquent man. <laughs> then she used the word eloquent. Then she got she still doing it. Anyway. <laughs> Is that vodka? Yeah, I believe it's my vodka. <laughs> it's, it's my hair. <laughs> it's my outfit. It okay. might be a full moon tonight. I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so let's bring this back in. So we were saying, <clears throat> you you can't say it, but I can say it. Um, I, I, I feel that they're opening up the door when you do say it. With the N-word, yes. I don't really refer to myself as the B-word at all. I, I don't, I just... I don't, I don't really talk, I don't really give myself introductions like that where I'm like, oh, I'm this, I'm that. But um, like I said, the only time I really embrace it is if somebody is calling me that and I don't, I'm not getting offended by that because I know this person, if I'm not doing anything directly to, to have them think of me that way, then I know they're just doing it out of spite and I choose right. not to be offended. And I embrace it. I'm like, yes, I am. And I am that bitch as well. So there's nothing else you can do in that situation because that, you're fighting against the resistance and the negativity that that person is bringing to you. But I think all in all, um, I mean, I, it's not offensive when I hear people say like how you say it with your friends. That doesn't bother me. Um, I have friends who say that and I know the context that they read it in. When I first, like a couple years ago, when, when someone said it to me and I was very much like, not having it, I was like, don't ever call me that again. And I got serious. And I looked at them and I was just playing. I'm not laughing. Don't say that. Now to you me. know. We don't know. Now, now you, you know. know. And um, another person said it, and, and we weren't really cool like that. And I was like, you're the only person who I let say that, and I don't get very stern with. But don't do it again because I'm going to call you something else. So, certain people, if I just met you and you call me that, I'm going to check you because I'm not comfortable with you like that. That's a boundary thing. Like, yeah. get to know me first. If you're my significant other, that's something that you should not be saying. Like, if we're arguing or something, you know, absolutely not. Um, I have had someone jokingly say that to me, like, in a positive way. Like, oh, you're sexy, and then B word. You're just giving me a compliment on my outfit or whatever. I didn't get offended. Um, they didn't do it very often, and it wasn't in a serious context. Gotcha. So it's like, it depends. But, again, if it's, if it's from someone who's being serious, um, I'll be like, yeah, I'll show you one. I'll definitely show you what a bee looks like. So I hear that. That's a very triggering word. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Right, what about you? When do you feel? Yeah, don't. Uh, <laughs> um, Cantankerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I'm, if I'm in an argument, and that, that kind of goes for my significant other and my friends too, because I know where it's going. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're talking about tea and we're laughing and we're kicking, yes. But if we're having like a disagreement, that's don't do that. Yeah, those that, are fighting words. Yeah, don't do that. Then you might lose our friendship. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. I had an old friend call me that because I was telling her about something. I was, I was being kind of lighthearted about something, and there was no reason for her to come around and say that. But she was like, oh, well, you're being in that situation. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, I didn't say anything at the time, but it was stored in my head. And when, when I decided to no longer have a friendship with her, that was one of the things that came up. Because I had never called her that, even in a joking context. And she was being serious. So I was like, how are you going to be a friend of mine and say that to me? And, mm -hmm. you know, come back around like everything is fine. And I was like, no, you're the B word. I was just playing. Oh, she was serious. She was, she's, yeah. Anyway, y'all, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The B Word. And hopefully you guys learned uh, that you can use cantankerous instead. 
I was about to say that. What's the word of the day, guys? Can't take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> so, with it being Halloween, we know that people are out there drinking and being crazy and getting into fights and uh, eating weird candy. Don't let that make you call the wrong person the B word and get into a fight. Weird candy? Weird candy. Okay, yeah. I haven't been trick or treating in years, so I don't know what the candy's like. Then you, then you should be able to understand that it's weird because you haven't had it. Oh, okay. That makes it even weird. Weird candy. It's probably, it's probably candy. Don't eat it. it. it some people are giving out old candy from years ago that's been like, that's like, it's all gooey and stuff. Candy they should be handing it out. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean by weird candy. Oh, okay. it, It's like the stale stuff that nobody's had in four or five years. So, y'all make sure you guys are safe on this Halloween. And, uh, yeah. Till the next time? Till the next time. Happy Halloween, guys. Bye.